evidences never lie, but people can and often do. So hello and welcome. I'm your host, Dr. Ruby Gill, and I feel privileged to extend my warm welcome on the behalf of lovely professional university. So attendees, you might be wondering the reason of gathering virtually. Let me reveal the reason. We are here to witness an incredible session as our experts are going to tell us all about to unlock and identify your fingerprint. So I'm sure you are as excited as I am for today's learning process. So before that, allow me to welcome our experts. Dr. Neeta Raj Sharma, Professor and Dean, School of Bioengineering and Biosciences, lovely professional university. Um, it's a privilege to have you on board with us today. Thank you so much for joining. With equal pleasure, I would like to welcome Dr. Diksha Sankhyan, Assistant Professor, Department of Forensic Sciences, lovely professional university. Thank you so much, ma'am, for giving us your valuable time. Thank you so much for joining. So, uh, moreover, we have with us our admission nominee, Mr. Pankaj Ridge, Assistant Director, Head, Department of Tie-Ups, Division of Admissions, lovely professional university, an intellectual personality who holds a master's degree in management with a keen area of interest in training and development. With an experience of more than two decades in multiple domains, including teaching, training, and operations, he has occupied strategic positions in multiple organizations of repute. And attendees today, he'll be discussing about eligibility, scholarship, fee structure, and infrastructure of the university. So, sir, thank you so much for joining us today. Last but not the least, I would like to extend my warm welcome to my co-host, Dr. Minaj Ahmed Khan, Associate Professor, School of Bioengineering and Biosciences, lovely professional university. Thank you so much, sir, and over to you, sir. I'm really thankful to lovely professional university and Ruby ma'am for introducing at such a nice words and I would definitely not like to waste the time anymore into any other much introductions part but yes it is my responsibility to introduce the panelists today who are uh, who is who's not uh, actually um, uh, words behind because I have already, uh, as Ruby Ma'am said, that uh, Dr. Neeta Raj Sharma, the professor and senior dean of school, heading the school from uh, beginning from the beginning of uh, this school in LPU, and she is having enormous experience of 25 plus years, and it has been uh, really a learning part for all of us because of the enormous experience she carries. And not only that, she also has the number of national and international reputed projects as well. And along with this, a several number of projects that is running under wastewater management. And not only this, she is also working with several number of NGOs as well. And along with this, she has immense number of publications along with books and patents as well. And along with that, Dr. Diksha Sankhyan, who is an assistant professor at uh, Department of Forensic Science in the school. So she will be the person who will be talking about the topic that has been in front of you right now. And she, Dr. Diksha has been a PhD from Punjab University, Chandigarh. So I'm not going to waste much of the time into it. And I would like to ask Dr. Neeta Raj Sharma to come onto the platform and give us a brief glimpse of what's the, what our aspirants are going to learn today so that in the upcoming future, they could understand that what they will be when they will be a part of LB. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Dr. Minhas. Thank you, Dr. Ruby, uh, for the introduction and uh, our colleagues from lovely professional university. So at the outset, I would like to uh, welcome all the participants in this very interesting webinar that is unlock and identify your fingerprints. So in brief, I would like to tell you that we in School of Bioengineering and Biosciences are running various programs such as biotechnology, microbiology, biochemistry, molecular biology, and genetic engineering, zoology, botany, forensic sciences, and bioinformatics. So this time, considering uh, the importance of the forensic science, my colleague, uh, Dr. Diksha Sankhya, 
has chosen a very interesting topic that is fingerprints. And uh, as we all are aware, that forensic science has become an essential component in criminal and civil cases. And considering the importance, its necessity, and uh, the uh, applicability, government uh, has taken a lot of initiatives and government has now focused more on its development by establishing more forensic laboratories, not only the basic laboratories, but advanced laboratories, interdisciplinary laboratories, as well as the various institutions. So in forensics, as we all know that evidence collection, analysis, these uh, two uh, part or the components, they form the basis of any investigation. So types of evidences uh, vary from case to case, and uh, fingerprints are one of the major evidences encountered in most of the scenarios uh, you might have aware about it. So these fingerprints are unique and individualistic impressions found in nature and useful in identification of a person. Therefore, it becomes very much important to understand the fingerprints, composition, their different types, and how these fingerprints can be developed, can be preserved at the crime scene when we work on the crime scene investigation. So this webinar, Unlock and Identify Your Fingerprints is scheduled and being conducted by the expert, Dr. Deeksha Sankhyan, to sensitize about the very basics of the fingerprinting procedure and we have the lab technician, uh, Mr. Shamsher Singh with us, and he will be demonstrating that how fingerprinting is developed, uh, fingerprinting is developed and preserved, what are various techniques. But before we go in the details, Dr. Deeksha Sankhyan will give you some of the theoretical content that what you are going to uh, study, uh, I mean, learn today by this, webinar as an outcome. I wish you all the best uh, through this webinar and let's uh, learn what Dr. Diksha is going to teach us. Thank you. So over to you, Dr. Diksha. Thank you, ma'am. And a very good afternoon to everyone. I hope you learn a lot of interesting facts about forensic science as well as fingerprints that is a major basic topic we are considering today. So I'll just be sharing my screen. I hope this screen is visible to all. Yes, it is visible, Diksha. Can you put it on? Uh, Starting off with our topic, the topic that we are considering in this webinar is the unlock and identify your fingerprints. Now, all of you have might have un, uh, heard about the fingerprints. Everybody is aware about forensic science. You have your series online. You have your OTTs. You might be seeing various crime investigation, every such series and movies. Now, the major and most important evidence that you come across are fingerprints. Now, although we talk about generally fingerprints, but what are they? So when we are taking someone's fingerprints, how they are taken, how they are analyzed, that forms the basis of fingerprint analysis that's quite common in all the investigations. So starting off with us, now the webinar will be considering three major aspects in the webinar. I'll be telling about the importance of the fingerprints there are various methods of development of fingerprints. So we'll be considering one of those methods, which is the powdering methods today. And also at the end of the webinar, after the video has been shown to you about how to develop, that we'll be seeing live, we'll be telling you about the status that India has about fingerprint analysis. You might have heard, and you see all those things that is world over going on in fingerprint analysis. But what our government is doing, how it is improvising the fingerprint analysis. We'll be discussing that as well. So starting with our series of webinar on fingerprint analysis. First of all, I'll start with what are fingerprints. Now, so starting about fingerprints, what do we do? In common day-to-day -day life of ours, we have our phones, right? Smartphones. Now, smartphones, they are unlocking with your fingerprints. Have you ever thought of this, that what is it taking, right? 
So when it is identifying that you are the person whose phone this is, what is it taking? It is taking your fingerprint. Why is it so? What is it, you know, analyzing in that, right? So we'll be talking about fingerprints. Sometimes there are certain unaccessible places, only authorized personnel are allowed there. So they are taking fingerprints at the entry level to allow the, uh, you know, entry to certain areas. Your Aadhaar card, the most common example that you have, when you go for the Aadhaar card, they are taking your fingerprints as well, right? So what are these fingerprints? So we'll be going to start the basics of it a bit. So fingerprints, these are very interesting ones. These are the patterns that have been created by your ridges. Now, when we are talking about the hands, there are certain patterns in there. You might have noticed it. Now, these patterns, they are not just for the sake of designs. They are there for a reason. It gives you the power to hold certain things these ridges that provide certain small roughness to the area so that you can hold certain items. So these skin, they are important and they are unique in the nature, right? So these prints, that is the ridges, they are creating those individual characteristics. These are developing when the child is still in the womb of the mother. So when the child inside the womb is around six months of age, they become permanent in nature. That means when we were six months old in the mother's womb, since then till now, and in the old age as well, these prints, once formed, will always remain the same. And hence, the unique characteristics and permanency that we are seeking in an authentication print, right? So why are we using it in forensic science? What is the purpose that we are focusing so much on the fingerprints? When we are seeking someone's identity, what do we require? We require it to be unique. And fingerprints are something that gives us that platform. Now, fingerprints are unique for each and every individual. You can take any two people. They'll always have different fingerprints. In fact, identical twins, they are known to share the same DNA as well. If you are going to test the DNA of two identical twins, it will be similar. You would not be able to differentiate. However, these fingerprints are different for the identical twins as well. And that is how they are very much important. Interesting fact, even fingers of the same hand, they have different prints. And that's the interesting fact of fingerprints. They are so unique. Another aspect, now they are permanent in nature. As we have stated, once formed, when the child was within the womb, six months of old child within the womb, Till the person dies, those fingerprints, they never change their pattern. Thirdly, let's say you have a small cut. Now, even when you have a small cut, those fingerprints, those skin will join again, will form the same pattern. The only catch in here, if the deep cut is there, too deep a cut, then only your fingerprint would change. However, that cut is also a unique characteristic. So no matter what happens, these prints are always there as your identity proof wherever you go. Now, wherever you're going, your prints are there, but you're leaving them as well. And that forms the basis of forensic science. No matter what you do, you're leaving your mark in the form of various things, one of them being fingerprint. Wherever you're sitting, you're leaving your prints where your hand touches. When you're using your phones, you might have seen, you're constantly rubbing your phones. While you're rubbing your phones, your prints are left on the screen, right? If you ever used your phone and tilted it a bit, you might have realized, you might have seen, that is your fingerprint, right? So similar way, no matter what you touch, it may be the wood, it may be the paper, it may be the cloth, whatever you're doing, you're leaving your prints there. And that is what the forensic science is analyzing. This fact is making it a very important forensic tool. And this is how we catch the culprits. Any kind of crim criminal scenario is there. Culprit is using the hands. Maybe opening the door, maybe touching the victim, has the weapon, opening the door or the window, handling various things. They are leaving their prints. Hence, the identity proof. But the question then arises, how are these prints being left? Why are these prints being left? 
if you are touching the elbow of your uh, you know arm you might be leaving your print you might not be however if you are touching your hand somewhere you are always leaving the print how is it so the reason lies in the biology of it the biology says your hand is good for holding certain things hence the petrins whereas this area has one more interesting factor in hair have you ever seen any hair in these regions no this region is specialized it has a lot of sweat glands now whenever a person is sweating sometimes small amount maybe large amounts whenever sweat is transferred sweat is leaving that petrin print behind may be visible may not be visible but that is the culprit that is leaving the print behind the sweat glands and that is what we use for analysis as well so if you are choosing a method of identifying the print you need to know what sweat gland component is there so when we are coming to the application part of it what you will realize are the latent prints patent prints and plastics these are the three most common type of prints we come across at a crime scene latent are the invisible the most common one print in fact this one is the one we'll be taking up today patent are the colored ones most commonly there is bloody print which is left there might be some other thing it may be oil it may be paint which is painting the finger and being touched somewhere right the third one are the plastic prints whenever you are putting a 3d print somewhere maybe a soft surface or anything that becomes a plastic print so the most important one are the latent ones that we are going to take up in this section later discussing about the crime scene fingerprints the major issues that we come across practically is recovery of them because the prints that are left as you can see in the picture these prints are not left as if we can get it the surfaces may not be plain they are mostly rounded or you know angled so that is one of the issue the other thing is partial prints sometimes the people are not touching the thing properly they are using some part of the tips or the palm right so these are the issues that we generally come across and we work around them we find the solution we analyze and culprit is caught no matter what so coming to the fingerprint development so i am going just just going to tell you the steps of it and then i'll go i'm going to show you how it is done so the first step the first step is to identify that the print is there as i've told you in the previous slide the most common one is the latent or the invisible one now to visualize the invisible if you see the slides you see the black spots right these are the prints however how to locate it in a plain area the thing is to visualize it using light so there are various light sources used in forensic science to visualize there might be a print there okay so firstly we visualize once we have visualized we used the most common method is the powder method so we used specialized fingerprint powder we put it on the suspected area where the print might be there the oil or the sweat in the secretion of the hand it is going to absorb the powder rest of the area is too dry it would not take it up for too long whereas the sweat or the oil component it will hold on to the powder and hence your prints which we are going to develop right so now we have our uh, technical expert here and will be showing you a video and then we'll proceed with the status of the fingerprints in india So I hope it is visible to all. Yes, ma'am. It is visible. Yes, yes, visible. So now, what we have in here, we have a slide, right? It is quite a plain one, if you see. But what we have done, we have put our hand in there. 
Now this plain one will be developed using the fingerprint powder. What you see in the bowl is the fingerprint powder. It is a specialized powder that we use. And the tool that you see him holding, that is the fingerprint brush. Now this fingerprint brush is also not a common drawing brush. If you see it moving, you'll realize the bristles are too soft. So there is a movement technique we use. He's rotating it a bit on the fingerprint plate, or sorry, on the plate. And wherever the fingerprints are, you might be visualizing it is being developed, right? So you can see the whole hand print in there that has been developed. So majorly, what is there? You can see the five fingers as well as the palm print being visualized, developed, and created on this glass sheet. Now that the method that we are talking about, mostly what do we do? We avoid moving it to and fro. Mostly what he'll, he's doing is giving it a rotation movement. And that is the met, best method to develop a print. So if you can see it properly, with the edge of the sheet, this is the print that has been developed. And this is how easy it is. It can be done anyhow, any place at the crime scene itself. It doesn't take much of the time. All is required. It's just the expertise to know how, the, how to do these movements. Now, the next step after the development would be collecting it. Development is fine, but we need to collect and take it up, take it up further, digitalize it, and analyze the fingerprint. So what we are going to do, that the best method is the taping method. We have this specialized taping method. It will be put gently on the print. And as you do the screen, uh, this, uh, you know, savers on your uh, phone that you're using, the covers on your phone, the way you gently move that on the screen, similarly on the print, you're gently going to put the tape, press it lightly. And once you're sure the print has transferred, that sticky powder in the same print form has transferred on the tape, this will be lifted gently. Now he has gently put it, pressed it a bit, and he has lifted the tape. Now the tape again has been pasted on a backing card. So he's just pressing it and it will be shown to you how it looks like. So if you can see here, these prints, beautiful prints have been developed. Now this technique that you just saw, what you need to understand basically about this is this fingerprint powder and method. Now, if you just see this, this thing again, you find two fingers missing, right? Now those two fingers were the ones which were lifted by the tape early, right? So we have just done a successful transfer of the developed print from this slide. Now, what we have done is, it was a light colored glass surface that we had. So we used a black powder. So this was the black powder. If you see the consistency of it, it is too light, too basic, too thin. You wouldn't even realize it is that kind of a thing, right? So this is a specialized finger powder that we have. In addition to that, if you see the brush, this is the brush. If you see the bristles, bristles are too soft. You wouldn't even realize they're touching. Now these brush and fingerprint specialized ones, they are used. This one is made by the camel hair, goat hair, specialized feathers, or even the fiberglass as well. This is so that when you're printing it, these fibers would not affect the print. It wouldn't scratch the print, affect the print, and will give you beautiful developed prints. On the lighter surface like this, we have used a black powder. 
if it had been a dark surface we would have used a lighter shade powders so we have different types of fingerprint powders as well so coming on again showing showing you how the print was like this was the print that you just saw so this card is a specialized card that comes for the crime scene collection so it has a tape attached to it you pull the tape put on this as was shown earlier lift it up tape it back on the backing card at the backing card there are details that can be filled in forensic science we have to mention on which date it was collected from where it was collected and what was the evidence number here so it gives you all the collection details along with the print here it can be digitalized or noted down for the easy analysis so as you just saw that was the fingerprint developed now we do say that fingerprint has been developed that's fine it has been collected that is very good now the thing is after collection what do we do analysis is fine but what are we analyzing in the fingerprint unique nature is fine but uh, what are, what is the thing that is being noticed in the fingerprint so i'll be coming up to this now now this thing all that you see this fingerprint development you have seen on your own if you see here every time a fingerprint is located we are always putting a scale alongside it just for the additional information which might be required for the investigation purposes now this is what we are analyzing actually now when we are doing the fingerprints what are we looking for if you see on the right side of this uh, screen there are three things that we are looking for these are the common patterns that are there the loops the holes and the arcs if you have ever been interested in a fingerprint you can just visualize your fingerprint at the bottom of it you'll see this is a fingerprint you can just look at your print what shape it is giving you is it giving a loop like a structure a round kind of a thing a circular thing that will be a whorl if it is more of a straight the patterns are flowing like a wave that is an arc and that is what we are noticing but the way they flow that is unique so what do we do if we have a suspect we create their fingerprint we paint their finger and we take the painted fingers on a sheet and later we analyze the print taken from the suspect in the lab and the one like just we have taken this print so we analyze this print with the taken print and if it is a match it's a match right coming on to the status now everything is well and done fingerprint was located fingerprint was collected developed collected analyzed as well but how are we dealing with it do you think that every time there is a crime you will have a suspect sometimes you do not have a suspect you do not know who the robber may be right so this is the issue that has been put forward to the government a lot now government has been very active recently regarding forensic science as neeta ma'am just stated this fingerprint analysis is just one thing the government has created various programs to uh, uh, you know uh, make people aware make people agile aware about the forensic science the need of it so it has now made it compulsory the government has made it compulsory that each and every crime where the uh, you know the uh, sentence may be beyond 7 years though for those definitely there will be forensic science investigation it would not go without forensic science investigation and that is saying something coming from the indian government now indian government has taken initiative in one other aspect that is nafis now nafis is what it is national automated fingerprint identification system they have stated that there should be a, a web based application where all the fingerprints that come to the police in the form of let's say there is a culprit there is a robber and he has been taken up by the police so whenever there is such case police has to take their fingerprints has to put in the database and that database 
will be available all over India, not just to a local police station or a state. All over India, this will be taken up. For an example, if I just share an interesting uh, case with you, it is the case of 90s, I suppose. It is a real case. So it's too old. At that time, the development methods weren't too high. And unfortunately, the system wasn't there. So if there was a case that there was a set of robbers. Now the robbers would do what? They will enter a house, they'll rob things. But the problem was they'll kill everyone. Everyone that comes across in that house, they'll be killing each and everyone, including a one year or two year old child who may not be able to identify them. Still, they'll be killing. That was their mode of you know, committing the crime. Now, this thing was not limited to a particular region. It, this thing was spread all over India. Initially, they did not realize that was the folly of the, uh, you know, develop uh, this uh, non-communication between two states, you can say. And nobody would have even thought about it. Now, they were clever. So what happened was in different, different states, they'll commit such kind of crimes. Of course, the brutality of it was very bad just for robbery or killing each and every family member. Now, they could not pinpoint. They went to every local robber. Or they went to everyone, but they could not locate. By chance, the intelligent police officer, he got certain hint or he had the sense, experience sense that it is beyond the state. So he started looking for similar. They, all they got was fingerprints, nothing else. So they started to find the fingerprints in any other states as well, the similar ones. Now, these fingerprints were, have been, take, been taken at, from the very initial years. It's not like something new. The states, the police, the local ones, they're always taking fingerprints from the culprits. But it is only localized. They do not share. Now he went to Rajasthan. Now this was the case of South India. Now the police kept searching for similar kind of fingerprints. They went to the level of Rajasthan and that's in North South region and they realized they had a match. And this took years to get solved because of this non-communication. But ultimately it was solved and it highlights the importance of a general national level of database that is needed. And this is the initiative that National Crime Records Bureau has taken up recently. And as you can see, it was in 2022 that this has been initiated. And Madhya Pradesh is the first state who has started it and it will be replicated by all other states in the coming next year, I would say. It will be available to all. Thanks to the Indian government who has realized it and it will be available to all and I hope New methods, new technologies will be developing not only the forensic science and fingerprints and these things, the uh, you know crimes and their you know the culprit, suspect, uh, you know we can sentence that person immediately regard regarding these based on these evidences. So it will help to lower down the crime rate that we are seeing a surge in. So hoping for the best. So this was the slide on your fingerprinting. Now, a bit away from a broader sense from the fingerprinting, fingerprint is, let me tell you, just one aspect, a very brief one. And what I have told you is just a small part of it. Fingerprint, only not this method is there. There are multitude of methods based on where you find the fingerprint. On the clothing, on the dead, on the paper, right? Let's say there has been some rain on a wooden surface somewhere and you have to take a print. Even still for that, we have different, different print types and methods available to us. But that again, fingerprint is just one thing that you think about forensic science. Forensic science ha is a broad, I can say it is a, you know, multi-specialized branch that helps in investigation. It broadly includes your DNA, biology. It includes your digital. You have, you're quite aware about the cyber forensic, I suppose, right? So cyber forensics, your DNA, your chemistry, your physics, all of these are parts of forensic science, just the major ones. Everything else, your blood stains analysis, if you have to identify age of the dead, if you have to identify a skeleton and you know, know the person whose skeleton it is, you can do that. If you want to know whether what kind of explosive has been used. So you come across various scenarios where explosives have been used, you see in the news, that this explosive material was used, was supplied from here, and this is how they track the criminals or the terrorists, etc. So what is that? All of that is forensic science. So this is, as you can see, too many things to talk about, but just an introduction for you. 
So forensic science, it is the application of various sciences as well as non-sciences, let me tell you, for the, uh, you know, uh, solving the criminal cases or for the investigation purposes. So I'll be stopping here and taking any questions you have. Thank you so much, ma'am, for this uh, such an impactful presentation. And I believe your insight and your guidance will definitely help the audience because your expertise and knowledge is exactly what students needed today to move forward and grow exponentially. So thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am, we have few queries from the attendees. So with your permission, we'll take up those queries. Please, yes, go ahead. Please go ahead. So before that, yes, I would yes. like to appreciate uh, the efforts uh, put in by Dr. Deeksha Sankhyan because um, she explained each and everything very, very, uh, in a very simple manner. And it's really very, very educating. And uh, Dr. Deeksha, I think um, and not only uh, the uh, fingerprints in one perspective for the crime investigation, but there are a lot many perspectives for uh, studying these fingerprints in detail as we know that our school is multidisciplinary so we have different uh, departments i would like to discuss with you in more detail that how protein profiling can be done using the fingerprints so again uh, congratulations uh, for your successful accomplishments in this area and a very lucid presentation from your side thank you ma'am Neetha ma'am, with your permission, shall we take the queries? Yes, please go ahead, Dr. Ruby. Okay. So, ma'am, there is a very interesting question popped up from Kiran Jodh Kaur. She wants to know that what kind of challenge, challenges you have faced in your academic era that you think the student of LPU will not face uh, being in the university? Yeah, uh, so... Uh... Thank you, uh, very good question. Again, I would say uh, that in other institutions uh, or in earlier times, forensic science was very narrow. But now when forensic science is being started, initiated in higher education institutions, like lovely professional university, wherein we are running about 250 programs, there is a very, very bright future I see for forensic science students. For example, uh, as we know that forensic science is again interdisciplinary and here is an involvement of various uh, areas like law, education, art, maths, biology, chemistry, toxicity, and lot many other areas. So our students are doing very well when they connect to a particular, uh, I mean, uh, the department for when it comes to the teaching and research. For example, if the students are working on the question document, LPU is having a separate law department here so that we can contact the uh, faculty expertise and question document to teach our students. If the student is interested in forensic physics, we have separate physical sciences uh, school and uh, accordingly students are given the inputs. So by that way, students are very, very uh, much benefiting uh, when they are registering themselves from lovely professional university because there is the seamless integration between sciences and engineering. And I must say, uh, today I came to know two or three students. Yes, they have got a placement in the government institution. One student, she after BSc, she got selected for junior scientific officer position in DRDO. So now you can understand the kind of inputs specific inputs rather we are giving to our students and there is a very good example you have um, seen uh, yourself now that how much clarity dr deeksha is having about the fingerprinting and how nicely she explained each and everything in this area so we have a very good expertise faculty in different areas in forensic sciences and surely uh, if students are interested to opt forensic science um, their career in forensic science 
they they will have a very bright future uh, in at least pursuing uh, forensic science from lovely professional university. I hope you are clear. Uh, Absolutely, ma'am. Ma you want to, would like to add something to this? Yes, ma actually, I just wanted to add one thing into it. Please go ahead. So uh, the another thing that is there is we offer in LPU the now, as ma'am has properly explained to you that we have excellent faculty in here. I'm not just talking about, uh, you know, I'm not talking about me as I ma'am was stating, but every, each and every faculty, they are chosen with different parameters. They're not just taken up, right? So we have excellent faculty, that's good. They are providing all the resources, that's another thing, right? So their academic uh, status, it is rapidly, you know, regularly checked as well, that if the student is lagging, it is taken into notice and it is, you know, taken up senior authority that what is the issue so that we can you know deal with it but the most important thing is that we are giving the student diversity we have foreign exchange programs as well and we are you know there are few of our students who have gone outside of india so they are exploring both the ways so how we are dealing they are going there coming back and you know learning it's a diversity so this you know studying and curriculum that is not just limited to one thing it is world over and it is we like to you know uh, this thing i we like to tell students about it and we are always uh, you know appreciating students who go there and we are providing them the resources for that as well absolutely i completely agree with you all here that yes lpu always emphasizes on holistic de uh, development and with the diversity i believe a student th those who is studying uh, at lpu they become a global citizen because they interact with several other students from different regions different states, different nations. So I believe yes. And plus we have this top notch uh, faculties and the facilities in the department, the machines, advancement, everything. They are put it in a row, put it in a thread and uh, they are offered to, us, top, uh, to the students for their development. So yes, ma'am, thank you so much. We'll take up another question. So Anita ma'am, as you were discussing about the placements and the recent achievements by our students. So the another question attendee wants to know that how we prepare the students for the placement, especially in this uh, department? Yeah, actually, uh, we have a different uh, categories for these students based on their interest. If these students are interested in the higher studies, the students are interested in job placement, or if they are interested in industry, we have different pathways in the curriculum for these students so that they can opt the uh, pathway of their choice. And accordingly, uh, the courses are being offered to these students. And also we have uh, MOUs with the industries. And if uh, they, these students are interested, we send them to uh, the industry for their full term training. And we map the training with the theory courses. And industry persons also come over here to teach industry-oriented courses. So placement is not a, a very difficult, uh, uh, I mean, the component uh, for us. Uh, as I said that we are working multidisciplinary. I would like to share that some of our students got placed in Amazon. And uh, this is not uh, only for uh, the basic knowledge about the forensics, but overall curriculum, the students are studying here, no doubt. Uh, forensic science is the specialized area and all the related inputs are given to the students. And also in summer, we offer different sessions, uh, placement related sessions to the students, wherein we offer skill oriented workshops to these students and these workshops are taken by the external agencies and this is how we prepare our students those who are interested for the placement and there is one set of these students they are interested in the uh, higher studies we give the uh, national eligibility test net uh, coachings to them wherein our faculty members teach them in the extra hours or additionally uh, maybe by one-to-one -one interaction, by giving the uh, test series uh, to the students. So this is how we prepare our students. And I'm happy to share that are all the faculty members in forensic department are net qualified. So they know how to prepare these students. So this is how we work for the student and we believe in one-to-one -one mentoring uh, to the students and we allocate mentors to the freshers and mentors 
teach them the program orientation courses that what is the further scope of the forensic science and based on the interest of the students we guide the students that in which area they should pursue on what courses they should register for the MOOCs and like that. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for your guidance. And uh, thank you so much for resolving all the queries of our attendees. And we have few queries that are related to admissions. So attendees, yes, admissions are going on in full swing. And we have our admission nominee, Mr. Pankaj, with us, who will elaborate the process and the highlights of the university to you. So over to you, sir. Uh, a very good afternoon to all, uh, all the students, all the attendees who are uh, in the broadcast and all the panelists who have very beautifully presented uh, the, the world of forensic science. And it's, it's a very mysterious kind of a world when it co comes to forensic science. It's very uh, intriguing, that's the word I must say. But anyhow, the students must have, must have got uh, quite a good insight into the world of forensic science as it was explained by uh, our expert, Dr. Diksha. Now over to the admissions part, I'll just uh, present my presentation. Just give me a moment. Uh, I hope my screen is visible, Dr. Ruby. Yes, sir, it is. Great. So, uh, students, what you can expect when you come to the university? What is your expectation or what you can expect when you come to the university? This is what you can expect when you come to the university. Very well. So, uh, LPU is not only known for creating uh, academicians or researchers, we are also known for creating sports people now. What you're seeing on your screen right now is that 13 of our students participated in uh, uh, the Olympics, Olympics, that's Tokyo Olympics, and uh, 12 of them brought laurels to the university. Just give me a moment. Right. In the recently concluded uh, Kalo India University game, we, we bagged the second place in uh, amongst all the universities. Neera Chopra is our student. Ajrang Punia is our student. So these are the kind of people that we are creating when it comes to sports people. What you're seeing on your screen right now is an array of people who are, are uh, alumni and they are in the one crore club of uh, placements. Quite recently, our chancellor, Dr. Ashok Mittal was uh, was invited to the House of Lords, British Parliament, and he delivered a lecture out there. So these are some of the achievements that I'm talking about. Rankings, another important thing for any university, rankings are important. We have been ranked 23rd by the World University Ranking 2023 ranking. We have been ranked 47th in India when it comes to Ministry of Education, Government of India. So that's an NIRF ranking. That's the university's ranking. From amongst 1,000 universities in India, we have been ranked 47th by the Ministry of Education, Government of India. Then in uh, the case of law, we have been ranked 13th in, in India. In case of architecture, we have been ranked 12th in India. In pharmacy, we have been ranked 19th in India. In engineering, we have been ranked 51st in India. Mind you, we, have, we, have, we are uh, much above than quite a few IITs and NITs pan India. So these are some of our rankings, which is the government ranked through Ministry of, Ministry of Education, Government of India. We have been ranked 34th in uh, business, business studies. And the Times Higher Impact Ranking has ranked us 74th globally when it comes to uh, ranking by the Times Impact Ranking. So these are some of the rankings that uh, we have achieved. Uh, in the Ardell ranking, this is yet another government ranking. We have been ranked third. What you can expect when you come to the campus, this is what you can expect when you come to the campus. Well, the, the year was 2019, and in 2019, we hosted the 106th edition of the Indian Science Congress, and none other than the Prime Minister of India inaugurated the Indian Science Congress. 
Dalai Lama was here a few years back giving away degrees to the students in one of the convocation ceremonies. Then we had two former presidents of India and Afghanistan sharing the same stage, once again giving away degrees to the students. Followed by that, late Finance Minister of India, Sri Arun Jaitliji, was here some time back giving away degree, uh, sorry, uh, starting up a startup school, inaugurating a startup school at LPU. Not only politicians, but intellects such as Gohar Gopal Das, they also come to the campus giving away live sermons to the students. Followed by that, yes, these people also come to the university campus, not only to sing and to dance, but also to interact with our students, uh, sharing their life experiences with our students. So this is the kind of exposure that you can expect when you come to the university. Talking about infrastructure, infrastructure once again is a very important part when it comes to education. Infrastructure, what you're seeing on a screen right now are our libraries. We have got completely automated libraries. That's a marvel of a building. These are the kind of blocks that you'll see around in the campus. 14 blocks joined back to back, housing the central library of the university and also quite a few other departments. Uh, that's our auditorium, a capacity of 2,500 people in a single go. Then we have got a 600-acre campus in which we have got a mall at, at the epicenter of the university, at the heart of the campus, we have got a mall. Let's go inside the mall. This is the interior of the mall. It's got bowling alleys. It got, it's got uh, recreational facilities in it. It's got uh, gymnasiums. It's got gymnasium where, got, where, where people can go and... Uh, they can uh, take care of their physical fitness. God forbid any student falls ill, but if any student falls ill, we are ready with a hospital. There's a hospital within the university and it's got a 25 better hospital. It's a 25 better hospital with resident doctors, medical staff, even a dental chair at the student's disposal. Uh, well, this is this is a, a pinnacle of a building that you see over here. This is our indoor sporting complex. Owing to this particular thing, we have created sports people of quality. Let's go inside the sporting complex. We have got all season uh, swimming pools, and uh, these are Olympic sized swimming pools that I'm talking about. You name a court, you get it. Badminton, basketball, volleyball, even a squash court is there. If somebody is interested in shooting, we have got shooting ranges. So these are the sporting uh, facilities that we have got. Coaches for every every sport, every major sport we have got. We have got cricket pitches, we have got uh, football pitches, and so on and so forth. That's a panoramic view of the university as such, and that's a night vision of the university. It's it's a it's a beautiful university. It's a great campus on National Highway Number Forty Four, connecting Amritsar to Delhi. Students, uh, you can take a snapshot of this particular slide. If you want to call us, you can call us on our helpline number. That's 1-800-102-4407. Or you can uh, write to us on admissions at the rate lpu.co.in. Or most importantly, if you want to know something about the programs that we are running, you can go ahead and uh, uh, visit us at lpu.in. So this is, this is uh, something which will be helpful for you. So you can take a screenshot of this particular thing. I guess that's all from my side. Back to you, Dr. Ruby. Thank you so much, sir, for the detailed information about the admission part. Uh, I believe that students will be benefited from this and they'll get all the details they need to know about the admission uh, admission process. So thank you so much, sir. And uh, sir, with your permission, uh, shall we, ma'am, shall we wrap up the session? Yeah, sure. I guess we can, we can wrap it up. All right, sir. So that's all for today, attendees. I would like to express my appreciation to the experts for their valuable contribution to our webinar, which was on unlock and identify your fingerprint. And my deepest gratitude goes to all those who have attended this webinar and helped to make it such a successful one. Experts, I'm sure your years of experience, your years of research will definitely help the audience to choose the right path. So until next time, I, Rubigil, finally sign off the session. Thank you, everyone.